and uh, good morning or uh, good afternoon if you are from any other time zone. Uh, thanks for joining this call, especially on a you know uh, Saturday evening and uh, weekend vibe six to seven. Uh, I, I I intend to make this session uh, uh, you know useful and informational, and I hope this uh, uh, session is helpful is helpful to you. So. Uh, before we head further, right? Uh, for this course of this uh, um, session, right? I'd be using my uh, local Sitecore instance, uh, which is kind of uh, uh, just a second. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the local instance which I'll be using, and uh, uh, this is more of a, a travel catalog kind of things. Like uh, you know, consider where you are in a travel business, and uh, uh, where you where your customers come in, they see like what are the different countries where you can offer the package and those kind of stuff. It's not a complete full fledged thing, but uh, you know you can relate it to it. Uh, so uh, th th so that this uh, uh, helps me in the uh, what do you say in 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 conveying my point or my uh, suggestions uh, to uh, to this in this session. So we have you know multiple countries that are you know uh, split across the uh, uh, continents and uh, those things. But the, the rest of the things we'll I, I'll you know I'll uh, explain about them as and then when it comes with the uh, corresponding concepts in this slide. So yeah. And uh, this session is not about uh, you know any of the new psycho products, be it 451 or uh, 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 you know uh, Box Server, uh, you know Psycho Order Cloud or uh, um, customer data platform, the new one. It's more about the uh, the digital marketing uh, you know applications that comes out of the box from Psycho. This has been here for the few for the few uh, you know for the few years, but uh, the way in which we uh, you know we can explore these concepts. Uh, what are the dependencies that we feel and uh, that we may come across and how we can actually solve it or how we can mock them. So that's what this session is about. And finally, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, when we, when, when we cover those aspects, right, what that allows us is that allows us to uh, explore more on the, uh, the actual uh, domain, domain, uh, domain kind of thing, like uh, the digital marketing domain to be, uh, to be precise. So the takeaway of this session is, as I mentioned, We'll identify this, uh, uh, you know, the marketing applications and uh, I know how we can utilize them uh, when it comes to uh, the dependencies, which I've talked about, right? See, we all must have started our journey with Sitecore with the traditional, uh, you know, the XM topology, like yeah, we'll have all this, uh, you know, uh, uh, templates, items, layouts, the presentations and all those things coming into picture. And, you know, we can find easily some, you know, free mockups available. Uh, we can just say, uh, you know, uh, download them and we can set up those instances. We can create a, a corresponding MVC or a headless or uh, any, any solutions. And then we can wait, we can carry our work forward. Like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about pages. We we'll talk about this, uh, you know, the multilingual and this uh, versions and all those things. But finally, and then we will gradually go and expi uh, you know, go into this, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, pipelines, commands and all those things. But when we when I come across this uh, psycho marketing applications, right? So what happens is like we we'll, we'll, we might we might face some uh, you know difficulty in exploring the, the, these uh, applications. When I say difficulties, these are you know some uh, prerequisites or some you know be it, uh, you know, be it infrastructure requirements or licensing requirements. But you know considering apart apart from that, right? We might have some additional uh, uh, you know components or entities involved. So we'll discuss about that. What are those components? What are those entities? How we can mock them, and then how we can generate the marketing data, and then we can explore the uh, explore these marketing applications. Because uh, when we need to, when, when I talk about exploring these marketing applications, right, the very first thing it requires is like few uh, few components, you know, like say uh, you know the users or, or those kind of stuff. But 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 when uh, there are few. Uh, uh, you know, few uh, websites that have those uh, aspects or few projects where we work, we have that. But there are uh, more number of stuff like, you know, where, where we don't have that option, but how we can mark them and how we can, uh, you know, explore these options. And one final thing before uh, starting away with the actual, you know, the point of this session is, uh, November 2021, uh, you know, we had our, I had a connect with one of the psycho person. In fact, that was kind of, uh, what do you say? The, the, what do you say? The, the, the starting point of this session or why this session is needed kind of thing. Like when we discussed with them, uh, they, yeah, he, yeah, he mentioned that, uh, there are more, uh, clients, I mean, uh, psycho clients who are inclined, who are using still, uh, XM topology than XP, uh, meaning like the traditional, the core psycho, uh, functionalities than the, uh, XP kind of thing. 
so the final uh, agenda or the final intention or the final outcome that is expected or i mean that uh, that i intend to give for this session is like if we could do you know uh, more of a you know the uh, what do you say a pov if we could, if we could uh, you know if we could convince the clients you know in, uh, uh, in a, if we could convince our customers about the benefits of these things right then that would be you know uh, really a good thing so uh, without you know uh, wasting any more time i'll get uh, i'll get started into it so this is the agenda for the day it's uh, more or less the uh, what do you say that i and I, I would have mentioned earlier in the uh, uh, earlier so we'll explore this uh, you know the basic uh, uh, you know marketing applications and then we'll get down to the core one uh, the experience profile or marketing automation and email experience manager i have a uh, you know a, a suitable or an you know uh, an understandable use case uh, re re relevant to the uh, the model application which i showed uh, that would you know uh, make this quite interesting i believe so uh, that is the reason why these three are grouped first and why the rest of them are, uh, you know, the group second. So we'll be concentrating more on this. Uh, the first three uh, applications is more or less, you know, is more to set the tone of this, uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, 45 minutes or one hour session. So again, uh, you know, uh, why? We all, you know, we always, uh, you know, go to the how part or, uh, you know, how we do with part or how we can do those part. But before that, why we need to do the part? Uh, that's what this particular thing is. Uh, so Insta page, Insta page is an, uh, you know, if you are into this, uh, uh, in a digital marketing or those kind of things for a long time, you must have heard of uh, Insta page. Insta page is an organization. It's a, it's a, what do you say? It's again, it's a, it's a company, uh, tech, a technology company. They provide this uh, uh, product, which which helps in in providing, uh, you know, uh, in or in uh, setting up this ad landing page or uh, those kind of uh you know it's more or less like a mimic version of uh side course box over kind of thing so they are good at this so uh what according to their recent report right i mean when i say recent it's not this uh, this year or uh, you know uh, one year it's in 2020 uh, towards the end that those kind of stuff like you know they mentioned like the 63 percent of consumers are annoyed with the fact that uh brands you know keep lasting generic advertising messages uh of course we all do and 80% of the consumers say they are more likely to do business with the company if it offers them a personalized experiences. And 90% of the consumers claim that they find personalizing appealing. If even if the first two things then uh, you know doesn't tick right, the third thing is really important. You know that's what has you know led to the the final thing. Like you know in today's uh, competitive market place right the right you know the contextual customer experience you know you have a personalized the side core experience or you know understand the customers at all customer touch points you know all the digital touch points right so all these things it's not it's no longer a nice to have it's an expectation uh this last particular thing is, ex is exactly the words from uh side core so uh so this is the reason why we want to work on this uh personalization and all those things so uh we can make use how we can make use of side course marketing applications in achieving these uh requirements is what this session is about so um you know current uh, in our current session we'll be uh, you know uh, mostly seeing uh, these modules uh, experience manager uh, experience analytics uh, experience profile uh, marketing automation uh, experience automation the rest of the things right they are quite uh, they are quite simple they are quite easy and the, um, you know to be to be more frank right i i've, I've seen more articles related to those uh, you know the campaigns goals and all those things but when it comes to uh, uh, experience profiles or those things the articles are limited and the number of persons who are exposed to these things are quite uh, uh, you know quite less maybe it's because of my experience or maybe it's because the my group but that's what i've been so uh, this is what we are going to see today and unfortunately okay and one other thing is this is the site for 10.1 and above uh, layout. I mean, like the present of la a launch pad which they had. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for this particular session, I'd be using site code ten. Uh, we'll be having the uh, marketing application of the launch pad under uh, this. Scenario. So, let's get into it. Experience analytics. So this is a very basic kind of things. Uh, I know that uh, what do you say? It's more like uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a school or uh, uh, those kind of stuff like that I'm presenting. I'll I'll skip over. Uh, you know I'll I'll show uh, uh, the presentation and the actual demo. It's not like I'm going to do top theoretical part first and then go on to the demo towards the end. We'll skip it. Uh, uh, you know every now. I mean we'll 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 show we'll show, we'll switch uh, uh, as and then. So first thing is experience analytics. So uh, experience analytics is more like the baby step towards this, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the digital marketing or those digital analytics kind of uh, those steps. The digital uh, if in using this experience analytics, we'll be able to uh, set up or uh, monitor the key metrics uh, that is required to track our uh, applications performance. 
uh, when I say applications performance, it's not about the load time or the response time kind of things. It's more of the digital term. I mean, digital ma marketing term uh, where, you know, we talk about this, uh, uh, you know, bounce rate, you know, bounce rate. It's more like, you know, when a particular person visits your uh, web page, uh, websites, web page, only one page they'll visit and then they, you know, abandon, they'll close your session. Door. So uh, similarly, you know, the number of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the average number of visits, average number of such visits, it's bounce rate. And there are uh, more uh, steps. Yes, just a second. There are more, uh, uh, you know, more such details, you know, ra rather than just the, uh, you know, the, the number of persons who visited, uh, you know, we can also have this value, which I'll be, which I'll be talking about next. And if you have the, you know, uh, multi-channel kind of things, right, the channels in which they come in, and if you have this uh, patterns, uh, you know, profiles of uh, pattern cards, uh, you know, set up, right, which we'll be talking about again towards the end of the session, uh, those separations as well. So, uh, you know, along with this, uh, uh, you know, pages, uh, these are all quite, uh, you know, what do you say? Once you have that, uh, uh, you know, uh, set up, when I say uh, set up, right, for the next to three, next to two modules as well, experience optimization or even the psychopath analyzer, we need those uh, common requirements, like, you know, apart from this infrastructure or licensing things, right, it's more like a configurational changes. Uh, although these components or these reports are most probably used by uh, marketing team or sales team, but uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the task of setting them up uh, comes into our, uh, I mean, our bucket. When I say our bucket, the developers or the IT teams bucket. So we set them up. So uh, along with the, the along with the common, uh, you know, gen generic uh, user visits and everything, right? They also talk about the entry pages, exit pages, and all those things. Uh, one particular thing is like uh, this is something which we all would have done. But one thing which I want to, uh, you know, uh, you know, some kind, you know, specify something important. I mean, like uh, it's a good to do kind of thing is uh, value provision. Uh, say for example, uh, you know, we must all have uh, visited, uh, you know, a commerce sites, you know, an e-commerce site. Say for example, Amazon. Uh, or Flipkart, you know, uh, say uh, you have, you know, a particular, uh, you know, visitor visits the site, he gets the URL, he visits it. We have, I mean, like in Amazon or Flipkart, they'll have different sections, you know, like maybe uh, personal, uh, you know, personal care or, uh, you know, uh, health and fitness or, you know, uh, you know, your uh, uh, mobiles or those kind of stuff. They come in, they visit these uh, main category pages and then they leave. They don't do anything else. This is considered this as visit A, okay? Whereas we have another person, you know, uh, uh, visit B uh, comes in, um, uh, makes a search, uh, search for a product, you know, say, for example, if they are looking for some uh, mobile products, I'd say they are looking for an, uh, uh, you know, uh, iPhone or, uh, uh, you know, uh, OnePlus kind of thing. They come in, they search for a particular product uh, and then they, you know, look after the product screen and then they compare or, you know, do some additional, you know, scroll down, they read the descriptions and all those kind of things. But ultimately they don't buy it as well. They, in fact, they don't even add it to their cart as well. But see, from the brand perspective, uh, when I say brand from the client perspective, I mean, like, uh, uh, from Amazon perspective, right? Uh, compared to visit A, visit B is more valuable. The reason why we say visit B is more valuable is like the probability of convincing the visitor B, right, uh, to uh, you know to uh, to uh, you know in in purchasing the, your product. I mean, uh, it's more when uh, it's more in case of visit B than in case of visit A. So that's the value per visit. You know, it's not just about the you know the the huge numbers you get. It's all. About, it's it's more about. It's again about the value per visit. Of course, uh, you know when you start, right? We have to uh, start initially with the visits and then the value per visit, and then and then uh, you know work our way uh, to get. Uh, you know work on work our way uh, around it. So. Uh, uh, and uh, setting up of these components, right? Like this experience optimization or uh, uh, even uh, experience analytics or the next one, which you're going to see the uh, psychopath analyzer, right? These are relatively simple. Uh, as I said earlier, right? We can have this uh, 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 infrastructure set up the licensing part. We'll have this XDB enabled or disabled. And then, uh, you know, we can start, uh, you know, kind of gathering the psycho automatically, you know, by out of the box, you know, it's it's more like a plug in play kind of thing. It comes in and then it captures all this data and then it gives you uh, in, 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 in case of analytics or or, uh, path analyzer. In case of uh, experience optimization, uh, experience optimization is more of uh, you know uh, how you pit your own page, you know, two versions of a page uh, against each other. So uh, by that, what I mean, say for example, we all must have worked worked upon. Okay, let me just go. 
we all must have uh, worked on our uh, you know the uh, in our sites okay in our uh, public facing sites or anyone like we'll be having this uh, page header or uh, hero image or page banner kind of components and we would have some image you know and then we feel, and, and then we'd be you know promoting it you know so in, uh, we'd be setting them up our content strategy in the way that uh, user clicks on those images and sees about it um in case of okay in this uh, for this particular instance let me talk about let, let me take an uh, uh, insurance uh, you know insurance clients okay say we have this uh, different life insurance products or annuities or you know retirement plans okay so we have the different uh, uh, different uh, different products over here and then we have some uh, you know info about the product over here and you have to, we have to make them so uh, uh, question this okay uh, if there are if there is uh, you have this particular image and there is this particular uh, you know text and there is this particular thing if there is another image that that gives more value than the uh, current one wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't you i mean like wouldn't it best to explore that option so uh, i mean of course if you have only one image then there is no question but if there is another one that could drive more value to your site when compared to this one right so that's why this uh, uh, experience optimization uh, comes in like uh, uh, like i know how you can uh, pick two versions of the same page against each other to see you know which one gives you more uh, value actually uh, this is uh, more of you know more of uh, uh, an experimental part which i did and i, I didn't get a chance to explore more uh, so uh, actually i had this two personalization i had two two versions of the same page we hit them uh, you know sometimes it shows the first one sometimes it shows the second one and finally which drives the value we get that and then finally it will help in uh, you know uh, designing this like uh, say for example i have this uh, pages like that will be like 26 percent and then uh, uh, visits and then that will be like uh, the change in the behavior and uh, when it comes to this uh, uh, the total the personal impressions also uh, will change over here so uh, more of a uh, the basic part okay the, the basic parts uh, uh, these steps so uh, coming back to this uh, path analyzer the final part of this uh, uh, you know the introductory phase kind of thing uh, path analyzer lets you to uh, just a it, it, it you know consider this for all the users or for all the visitors who visit our site who visit our site right um it, it gives the path they have taken like uh just a sec zoom it out a lot okay so over here say for example uh let me just include this and then we have this so uh right the the, the page usually starts from this uh, uh the internet kind of thing and then from that we'll be going to i, I mean like this is the normal page i do and uh, yeah, you know once you you, you you might see like why everything is going to this load load, load contact in our uh, a session like uh, when, when, once i give a demo for this marketing automation or those experience uh, profile kind of thing like you would understand that why because we'd be loading the contact only in this page and then we are continuing our uh, uh, visit that's why after this again home comes in and then we are visiting multiple pages okay now uh you know uh, ignoring uh, the demo uh, the demo application i mean like the demo application uh, for the actual case right say uh, in case of a uh, uh, university right you have this university uh, your, your, your client is an uh, educational institution and they offered like different courses and then each course will have this uh, uh, you know uh, sub, uh, uh, what do you say uh, 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 sub cases like you know like uh, maybe like uh, uh, they'll have this uh, first course and then there is the sub course and then they uh, uh, you know and then they uh, take it up further so in in such cases like uh, there is this particular page that gets trapped in the nth level like first level second level navigation and then the third level and then the fourth level when you see this right like when they go through this they visit this page more often but they have to go through multiple uh, navigational pattern then there is this uh, option like you know you can move this page from uh, what do you say uh, uh, what do you say from uh, uh, the fourth level or the fifth level and then bring them back uh, to the uh, the second or first or then or even if you see right like in whatever the path they take if this particular page right it it, it is a common path then you can you can promote more uh, you can put more uh, interactive contents or more uh, what do you say uh, promote promotional contents or key contents in those pages and then you can uh, like you know you, uh, this is the place where you know in few clients if you see right they will have this um, uh, contact us forms or this uh, small small forms they'll just have uh, have it in the you know one side of the navigation they'll split the layouts and then one particular layout uh, they'll have this so those kind of forms they can move in they can you know shuffle around with Cycos usability components and then they can come in so uh, okay that that's it about the very first three components these three applications are and uh, was more or less to have this uh, you know the the domain like we are not going to talk more about the technical aspects we'll be talking about how we can use the technical aspect into exploring the domain part so 
the next thing is of course you know experience profile and then finally we have this marketing automation but uh, before we proceed right uh, i'll just give a small uh, uh, you know uh, update on this uh, experience profile marketing automation and then we'll we'll, we'll switch back again so experience profile is more of this uh, you know uh, a special uh, uh, dashboard where you can uh, what do you say uh, view the uh, information about the different uh, uh, you know contacts in your uh, uh, application you know contacts who visit your application uh, so in terms of more uh, sitecore-ish terms right so uh, this is what the experience profile is all about uh, you know it lets you monitor the uh, you know the contacts uh, uh, you know contacts behavior how they interact with it and uh, you know what they have done earlier uh, when i say about interaction right the pages visited if they have any uh, behaviors right so those behaviors and everything will come into picture and again, uh, I know that I'm skipping far, uh, you know, a bit, far, uh, you know, uh, too fast towards this. But uh, in the next set of, uh, you know, next set, uh, next, uh, next ten or fifteen minutes, right, we'll be discussing more deep into it. So this is the marketing automation part. Marketing automation is like more of an, uh, uh, you know, an online automated to uh, online automated campaigning tool. Like once your contact comes in, right, it uh, uh, you you set this pipeline kind of things. Like you set like what is the start, what is the end, when I know uh, after which your contact needs to be in. I mean like uh, after which uh, criteria the campaign needs to be started or the campaign will be applicable for a particular contact and what are the different things okay so um, it's it's more like you know using this online automated campaigns uh, automate online automated campaigns right uh, you can we will it will help us interact more closely with our contacts and uh, uh, what do you say we can understand them we can provide them the personalized uh, you know uh, personalized experience which we talked about earlier so Okay, now before you know, uh, explaining anything about this further, let me just tell you one small thing. Like uh, in the past two slides, right? I have casually slipped in the term contact. Uh, I haven't used the word as user, or I haven't used the word as visitor, because there is a difference between a uh, visitor, uh, a user, and a contact. Say for example, a visitor is someone who visits your website. Okay, you don't have any uh, information about them. It's it's a random one. You don't have any identifiable information about them. They come in, they browse, they look, and then their session gets terminated. You don't have, and again, when they come in the next time, right? You don't have anything uh, to remember. Like this is that person, uh, and then to assign it to someone. So that's what the visitor is about. And then there is this user. Uh, the user is someone you know who has this membership with your. Uh, uh, site okay so uh, when i say membership right they have the uh, they have an account uh, they have a user id they have a mobile number uh, they have an email id you know something that helps you identify them uniquely okay so that's what this uh, you know the uh, the user is all about you have the, your own identity management where you uh, you know talk about this uh, uh, you know where you can come in where you can authorize them uh, i mean where you can authenticate them and then authorize them uh, authorize them into uh, giving uh, you know whatever the uh, the roles and responsibilities for them so uh, again now comes the term contact okay contact is uh, similar to what you say a user but it's more of a uh, uh, you know marketing term uh, uh, when it comes to user, you have only a few attributes about them, like their uh, email ID or phone number or those kind of stuff. But when it comes to contact, right, you'll have more information about them, like uh, what they have done in their previous visits. If you have this goal set up in your uh, application, like what are the goals they have triggered? And based on this previous visits, right, if we have this, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, 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 profiling part enabled, right? We can profile them. We can profile them into different, uh, what do you say, different uh, you know, cards and behavior, those kind of stuffs. So that's what those, that's what contact is all about. Uh, just like contacts, right? We'll be having, I mean, just like user will have some unique uh, IDs and everything. So now let us come back to this. Uh, okay, now, uh, okay, what we've done is like we've, 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 we've seen the high level of experience profile and we've seen the high level of marketing automation so the more the, the more the common part or the most the very first uh, dependency for us to explore more of these two things are users for users okay so uh, as i said earlier right when you are you know exploring few stuffs right the, this user is, is added as a dependency uh, so of course when i want to explore these stuffs right i cannot have an uh, what do you say an uh, identity management like b2c i cannot have a tenant and then i cannot have or even odd zero and then we can create and those things right of course you can do it technically it's feasible but it's uh it beats it uh, our, our cause or our intention is more about the marketing applications right so what we can do uh to over uh, the, those kind of dependencies is what we're going to see in again 
so the uh, dependencies being this user flow management and that is that you need to have a user registration and then there is this user id that comes with like you know to uniquely add with them and then there is this you know session begin session end like login logout flow and then finally when you have all these things set up you need you need to have this uh, you know uh, do this process over and over and get finally get the marketing data which is you know uh, multiple visits and based on the visits we'll be profiling them and then we'll be calculating them so that's what this contact is about so uh, this is the fire this is the mid level part of our uh, uh, discussion so this is what we are going to do uh, we're going to create a contact assign the contact to a session and generate the marketing data so i know this has been more like a, a theoretical aspect uh, let me just show you like uh... okay i'll just cover this one first see uh, for uh, creating the contact it's more or less the same i mean like we have this uh, uh, you know the uh, we have a well documented uh, uh, you know articles from sitecore uh, for creating the contacts and all those things so when we come into creating a contact right so we'll be we we'll we just have to use this uh, uh, what do you say the, the syntax for this one like we'll have this contact class and then we'll initiate it and then we'll have this uh, 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 what do you say the x connect you know after nine we have this x connecting you have a client connect and then you add it and then you add this to the, the contact okay now uh, this is where we uh, things get more interesting. Okay, so sorry. Uh, this is where things get more interesting. So, say for example, uh, we have this. Uh, so uh, we, we we can create any uh, random user. Okay, you can create a user and all those things. But when when we need to create more or uh, for five or ten, and then we have all these different kind of uh, uh, actual marketing scenarios, right? Then it, it's not. Uh, what do you say? It's not. Uh, um, how can I say? Although we can give them, it's not. Uh, it it won't be. Uh, you know, bet better if we could give our uh, own name. Like you know, we can assign our own name or something like that. So that's where I. Uh, that's where I made use of this uh, random user dot me. This random user dot me is an open source API. Uh, this random source is more like uh, how we have a uh, lorem ipsum, right? For when you come across this. Uh, uh, uh mock html mock html so those kind of stuffs right the ua people they'll be uh, giving us with this dummy contents right so that's what this uh, uh random user dummy is about uh except that it's more than uh, the dummy content like uh, maybe right now you might see this you know the email id or their birthday or these kind of stuffs okay a password kind of thing but when we make use of the uh, the response you know uh, we get from the, the the api which they give right it gives more details you know more more and more details like you know the, the gender name age date of birth uh, like you know their address so what happens is like the reason why i'm saying this uh, will come into picture we can make use of this is see in in, in terms of marketing automation right we in terms of an actual scenario we'll have uh, clients from uh, i mean if you are a global brand you'll have clients from different locations so uh, when you come across uh, when you create a contacts relevant to it right you can target uh, the what do you say the contacts based on these uh, based on the location like you know ideally when it comes in you can run a marketing automation pipeline you can segment the uh, users and finally you know uh, to multiple lists and based on those lists uh, you can you know uh, run your campaign again marketing automation uh, online campaign so it uh, comes with the you know the email id user id and you have this uid which is a unique id uh, uh what do you say this uid and all it's a it, it will be quite uh, important when we create a contact okay so when we create a contact we will be uh, required to give some uh, unique identifier uh, uh, kind of stuffs so uh, as i said right like the date of birth is with this, uh, more details like this it, they even have this uh, uh, you know pictures kind of thing so uh, okay let me come back here uh, uh, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll explain. Okay, it's actually loading. It's not like more is found. So uh, when I come back again, right? Uh, when we visit this particular uh, uh, session again, right? I'll, I'll go through the the technical part, the code, how we can make use of them. Uh, you know, uh, how uh, uh, how we can set them up. But this is more of an introductory part. So you now it all just you know uh, to what do you say? Uh, help you imagine or help you picture what we are talking about. See, uh, once we have this, the uh, all these things, right? I uh, will are created based on the information from that uh, uh, open source API. So once we have that uh, uh, contacts created, right? We have the relevant uh, pictures, name, their, uh, you know, the the address and everything. Uh, only thing is like the email they would have, but uh, for our email campaigning and everything, right? So it would be better if it comes to uh, my email, right? So that's why I've given the email ID for every user as mine. And other uh, second, uh, so. This is the final thing, and now let me come to let me come back here, okay, uh, to the contacts, okay, and I'll come. I'll, this is what the random 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 user at me is about. It's about uh, you know uh, an open source for creating random dummy users. Now coming back. 
that to the solution okay so what we did, what i did is like what we did over here is like we have this uh, we had this uh, you know a small get random user uh, we called that a, uh, random user api and we got the user data and then based on that user data right we uh, we created this uh, where the user we passed it on to uh, contact and then finally we uh, you know added this when it, when it comes to creating a contact adding a contact right there are more uh, components that comes into picture when i say more components i mean like it's more like more attributes when we have an uh, class and an object we have this attributes right like for example student student id name in terms of uh, marketing or in terms of uh, you know contact these terms are more or less called as uh, uh, what do you say uh, uh, facets so what happens is like uh, sorry so what happens is like uh, when we have this uh, uh, user created right we have this additional information like their name title gender these kind of stuff and then there is this uh, uh, what do you say uh, the email id uh, which is you know the contact uh, contact uh, contacting and then there is this address and then there is this phone number image and everything so these are different attributes as a, uh, you know associated with the contact we can make use of that uh, uh, the api's response and then we can have them created uh, so it will be more or less easy uh, and then what happens is like finally you will be uh, you know uh, you will be setting them in the uh, you will be creating you will you will be uh, submitting it to the x, x connect uh, client x connect endpoint so what happens is like we now uh, using this will be able to create the contact so what happens uh, we have made use of the random user Uh, we fit that API. We got that info. We then created the contact. Okay. So, but finally, what happens is like uh, uh, by the end of this process, right? You you would be just creating them. Uh, every so uh, to explore marketing application, we need marketing data. So we, we you you'll get the marketing data only when for each user those infos are tracked. So what we are going to do over there is we'll. Uh, uh what do you say we'll make use of this uh, you know a, a random thing okay this is kind of an uh, load controller which i created uh which is you know uh, let me just go ahead and do it if you come up over here see right now there is this uh, uh, it, it italy kind of things uh, uh, comes in okay now uh, i've just loaded the contact uh, that's why uh, based on the uh, you know the profile's behavior their pattern uh, it literally is showing down so what i'm going to do is i'll just uh, uh, unload that contact you know for which i've used to the same uh, page okay now let me come back here okay now i've come back here and what happens is right now it is uh, redirecting to belgium rather than uh, italy so what happens is like when i loaded the contact let me just go again okay so this one so when i when we loaded right i picked a contact at random and that random and that contact uh, you know uh, tends to be the uh, kehan second and now let me come back to this profiling part okay okay uh, to be more uh, uh, precise right let me just may just show you the this is that we done okay see this is what we've done like we uh, visited load contact and then home and then come back again to the load contact okay so this is what this visit about so now i've just uh, shown you that this is the visit about now if we come back over here right see over here this particular uh, contact right is more of this romantic goer so when uh, when that romantic goer comes in right uh, i've i've added this uh, uh, personalization part you know uh, for that particular uh, component uh, to if they are a, a romantic goer right we can make use of this uh, uh what do you say it uh, italy italy page uh, let me just show you okay let it load so if you see over here right if the current uh, visits the uh, romantic goer pattern right then the uh, italy is the thing which is shown like uh, when it is not the case right when the current user is anonymous because we we've, we've unloaded the contact right when we do that the session again becomes anonymous and then we have this belgium this belgium related banner which comes in okay so uh, what i'm trying to say over here is with this what we can do is like uh, we have we have mapped or uh, uh, we have in fact we have uh, tagged the pages to each thing like for when it comes to uh, uh, belgium right these are more of a romantic destination kind of thing when it comes to uh, montreal right it's more of a metro kind of thing it's a, a urban, urban and the history kind of thing okay when it comes to uh, india right we've just added this category to uh, you know historic and nature so what happens is 
so based on the visits which the user uh, uh now based on the multiple visits which they have right let me just go again uh this time let me just pick any other contact Uh, this is again a random contact uh, so what happens is like uh, based on their previous visits right are uh, they are more of a, a romantic goer and then cities like it you might see this romantic goer uh, again more because one of my use cases related to this particular uh, uh, profile so i i've, I've uh, I, you know i've ultimately turned everyone to be a romantic goer uh, pattern and then i've made use of it see uh, what i'm trying to say is like we we have our uh, that's why it's more there and more of that we have the city slickers and then there is this culture vulture uh, you know thrill seeker and wildlife traveler so when you have this particular uh, application right uh, a travel kind of application you need to know uh, you know who your uh, Uh, customers are like you know what their uh, preferences are you know like whether they are more you know more interested in romantic destinations or whether they are inter- you know uh, more interested in historical destinations or whether they are interested in you know in in countries like you know Tanzania or Namibia right so these are more of an wildlife and safari kind of things so that's where the you know the we, we can we, we call them as the you know i term i term them as a wildlife traveler so these are the key profile keys so based on the pages which they visit their value gets added over here and finally the uh, the, the, the the relevant pattern uh, comes into picture so why all these things are uh, you know we're talking about is uh, when you when you uh, profile your user right when you look closer at your uh, when, when we look closer at our customer behavior right the data which they give right i mean either voluntarily or involuntarily or based on their uh, Uh, what do you say their, their their behavior within our application right the data which we get from them right it's 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 really uh, what do you say it's, it's it's more and if we if we put those data into use properly we'll be able to achieve around uh, you know 80 or 90% of our uh, contextual customer uh, you know experiences kind of thing so uh okay one one last thing i mean like if you're still wondering about this but most probably you won't but for people who are So, for example, I have we have Italy, Italy, right? So it's it's more of a romantic destination. So whatever the cards that is applicable, right? I've given this as a romantic destination. So whenever a particular user visits this, their romantic value gets high, and they'll be, uh, you know, they'll be moving an inch closer to the uh, romantic goer card. So uh, that's how uh, that one uh, comes in. So okay, now let let us come back here again. uh so as i said right so uh this is what i usually do uh, uh, uh you know uh, we have this user when it when, when they come in right we i usually check them whether it fits anonymous this is for uh, as i said right we need this marketing data okay so now now look at this now uh, look at this based on what we've done right uh, what we've done so far right we were able to capture the data of uh, you know these many contacts you know their be- their browsing behaviors and all these things now let us now in the next session i'll be talking about marketing automation where we can utilize how uh, you know where we where we can you know have come up with an uh, uh, you know a scenario where we uh, use this particular uh, uh, how we can make use of this marketing uh, data and then again you know finally use an email experience manager to show some what do you say uh, 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 what do you say an uh, a, rem- a reminder mail or an offer mail or a promotional mail kind of thing so uh, we cannot uh, explore uh, straight away those components so before that we need this uh, contact thing and then we'll be able to move further so when it comes to a session right so when they are anonymous uh, we, we can check them we can add this particular uh, you know get a random contact and then uh, just a okay so the based on this uh, we've got this uh, uh, contact identifier and then we'll add this and then we'll enable this uh, analytics tracker dot current dot start tracking and then when it ends right we'll be giving this uh, uh in visit kind of things where we'll be clearing and then we'll be uh, clearing the sessions once once uh, once we do that then that uh, session over here will be considered as uh, you know end and then for the next every visit which we do a new session will be created so uh, that's what this is about and uh, now let me just go over here and this is the code aspect before and uh, you know as i said right like it's it's a, a contact a new contact and the identifier okay so when you create a a new contact right you'd be creating it using the uh, contact identifier when it comes to contact identifier the very first thing which i do right which i give them over here right that is randomly that is more like a source uh, let me just show you that if you see here right that is the source okay now uh, okay now uh, whatever i've i've spoke right it's more like uh, 
uh, from a what do you say a local perspective and exploring it perspective now to connect it with the natural live implementation right what we what they, what we'll be doing is when we create a say for example you have a registration screen okay so once the particular uh, uh, you know for a, uh, once a particular customer completes his registration screen registration right the whatever your uh, identity management may be you know it will be redirecting those uh, user details along with the user details to your application where you can create a contact for that user if it is not already created and at that time what we'll have is like this uh, source over here right will be the source like uh, if you have multiple identity provider right say for example uh, just a second We'll, we'll have scenarios okay say for example it's not like you'll be create it'll, it'll, it'll allow your uh, uh, customer to uh, you know connect from only one particular uh, iam i uh, say if we have this multiple I, I mean i can go with this but that's not our scope right now uh, so we have this multiple uh, just for demo purpose i want to show this so we have this uh, uh, multiple uh, identity uh, uh, you know uh, 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 identity management uh, sources right so when you come across that right we'll have this uh, uh, we'll have we'll consider the source as like uh, a b2c like auth zero or uh, uh, any other like uh, any other identity uh, like you know, if you're using like google authentication kind of things for your customers then you can have that so that's what the source is about and then what happens is like this identifier this identifier is something that should be unique like for each user it should be unique uh more in more or less cases people will use the email id as the identity identifier part over here but in our case right and uh, in, in fact that identifier using email id is more uh, what do you say is more recommended thing uh, see that, that you know you can easily uh, you know search for that particular contact and then you can make use of them you can set up everything but in our case like uh, in uh, while exploring it local we'll have this multiple users right when this email experience manager comes in uh, we will be triggering multiple mails so at that time i cannot i, I mean i don't have more than uh, one or a few email id so i made use of my uh, you know uh, one common email id for every uh, for every person and uh, uh here i have used the uh, uuid again which i said right this uuid which comes from this uh, uh what do you say the uh, api is more useful in such case, in such scenarios so and then what happens is like finally we'll have this contact identifier type it is either known or uh, anonymous kind of thing so uh, this is an enum kind of thing so once you have this so after this contact uh, you know you can uh, add it to this and then you can add more information about this uh, uh, you know uh, about this contact and then finally what do you say mm -hmm. You can set them up. This is like more of you know a kind of a dissecting the you know the high high level uh, uh, stuff uh, related to this context like the name, username, and everything. And then finally, what will be happening is uh, like you'll be uh, setting those contacts and every and then will be something which I mentioned earlier. So. And this is that such kind of thing. This is the place where we actually uh, set them and let me just do one thing let me close this session again and uh what is an in an italy kind of thing um uh we'll, we'll have this uh, a, 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 a query session at the end we will we've already been uh, taking a note of it uh we'll, we'll answer them towards the end um so coming back to uh what do you say the sessions kind of thing we've come up over here and this is a requirement setting and i've talked uh, and i've showed you about the uh, uh what do you say profiling the users and again that uh, what i said is it's a, it's a high level thing okay the profiling other than that there will be like more like a, a say for example whatever the the recent interactions which they made like if you remember the uh the definition of the i know the actual psycho term for this marketing automation uh, like whatever the interactions they had like say for example 12 3 this is the date they had this uh, interaction visit and then there is a personalization event at this home page at this particular time and then uh like you know 25 to when i was checking some demo kind of thing like an email was sent a goal was visited so these kind of things you know you'll know like what are the uh what do you say the interactions they've had like key interactions they had uh not rather than just a uh, visit kind of thing like which page they visited the uh, the key uh, tra uh, transactions they made when i say transactions over here like visiting a particular page or it's a goal kind of thing right you can assign it to anything like when they are subscribing it to your uh, uh what do you say your newsletters or uh, they uh, uh what do you say they have subscribed it to your uh, news uh, everything or they whether they have made any uh, you know feedback submission those kind of things so uh, coming back okay 
so now coming back to this uh, final uh, out of the second uh, last piece of this uh, experience automation uh, sorry the experience sorry psycho marketing applications is uh, marketing automation so let me come up over here this is one marketing automation campaign that is in progress uh, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll see see uh, when it comes to marketing automation right these are uh, more like a uh, pipeline kind of things like we have our uh, uh, devops pipeline or distribution right similarly for uh, interacting with your client for sending uh, say for example uh, if you have a if you are an e-commerce site and there is this client who has uh, added few uh, products to their uh, cart but they haven't checked out it uh, i mean like they haven't uh, bought them yet so in in such cases like you can send them a reminder mail uh, those kind of steps right so th these kind of steps needs to happen for every contact who has who has done that i mean for every user who has done that so in, in such cases this uh, uh what do you say uh, the pipeline i mean the marketing automation campaign comes into use or that's one particular case say for example you have a, a user sorry you have a site um uh, say for example you have this uh, recreational site you know like disney or something like that disneyland or some, some kind of site right so where you have uh where you have customers i mean where you have clients who visit of different age groups okay they register for your uh, uh you know uh, disney world kind of thing and then what you have to do is like uh, i uh, you have to segment those customers you have to separate them into multiple lists and then you have to uh interact with them say for example you cannot uh what do you say uh promote or sell or uh, you know uh, uh you know promote a product like uh, you know mickey mouse or uh, you know, down a kind of things to uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, twenty-five or thirty plus kind of thing. Like in those cases, you have to give them a different things. Like you know, maybe uh, I don't know, Narnia, and some other thing. You know, some other kind of thing. So the, what I'm trying to say is, like based on the age group, the products or their preferences will change, and for each age group, you need to have a different uh, uh, appro approach kind of thing. Say uh, in for those kind of steps, right? For separating users, right? The marketing automation pipeline can come into use. Say for example, uh, every okay, uh, every every automation pipeline, right? Marketing automation pipeline has a mandatory two parts. One is start, and the other thing is end. Like what what is the scenario? I know when when this particular uh, uh, pipeline starts. For example, for uh, for easy understanding of our. Uh, for our discussion, I've made use of this uh, uh, Italy page visit as a as a start. Like you know, this particular campaign it begins when a particular user visits the Italy page. Okay, and then what happens is like waiting. I'm gonna check for like you know whether a particular goal is triggered, and the goal is nothing but uh, uh, whether they have visited uh, you know uh, a Venice. Venice is something like a button which is inside the uh, what do you say uh, uh, Italy uh, page. Once they visit the uh, Venice page, right? Then we'll send them a uh, what do you say if this particular goal is triggered. And then if it is yes, we can send them an uh, uh, email automation campaign. Like for example, we have this Italy Italy trip because they are interested in Italy, and then they are interested into multiple places in uh, uh, what do you say uh, in Italy, right? Like uh, those kind of stuff. I'll, I'll show a demo of this and how we can explore those part. But uh, uh, now let's discuss about this marketing automation in general. So uh, now connecting this with segmentizing or uh, users right say for example after registration okay the start uh, your pipeline starts after the registration is completed okay so what happens is like once they come in uh, when when we have right we have multiple rules set up okay let us say this is a custom listener okay what happens is like we have this rule We'll have multiple rules, okay. Uh, for example, if we have this uh, uh, contact kind of thing, right? Sorry. Sorry. So it's not coming. See, we have this contact kind of things, right? See, when your contact is known, uh, when you have a particular attribute of your contact, okay. Say, uh, what do you say? Contacts, job title specifies to. So, this job title is one of the uh, attributes. I mean, like uh, the uh, facets kind of thing. You can include them over here. Similarly, you can add gender or uh, age as well. But it should always be there, right? Yeah. Birth date from birth date, you can get their uh, details as well. From birth date itself, you can make use of age. Uh, even if it's not right, uh, creating this custom rule and all, I mean, uh, creating this custom rule is also quite uh, easy. Uh, you know, as one said in uh, one of the Sitecore user group conferences in uh, uh, Europe, like uh, for every question that is related to Sitecore, like in Sitecore, can you customize this? Irrespective of how it ends, right? The answer is always yes. In Sitecore, you can always customize more stuff. So uh, similarly, what I'm okay. The reason why uh, why I why I use that uh, quote here is like we can have even create a custom 
uh, site code rules or rule over here and then we can make use of the uh, you know we can uh, set up like the age based on the age and then we can add a multiple list like you know 30 to 41 list we can create list of users list of contacts and then we can again you know run our uh, uh, automation for the cycle kind of things Uh, so uh, th okay, that's what the uh, the automation campaign is about, high level. And every automation campaign, as I said, about these two components, right? Other than two, they'll be having like uh, three uh, parts. I mean, like three components that you can make use of. One is the mainly you'll be making use of this marketing actions, and then there is this listeners. A listeners is like more of like you know uh, event listeners. Like you know, it, it waits for some things to happen. Like once this pipeline is started, uh, uh, the automation is started. The listener uh, waits for something. Like you know, uh, like whether the goal is triggered. You know, when we have any goal. Whether that goal is triggered, or when the outcome is triggered, or when it comes to visit listener, right? Whether a particular a particular page or anything is visited, those kind of stuff. Or you can make use of custom listener, and custom listener we talked about what are the different different uh, uh, aspects which we can use. So uh, after this listener, once that uh, listener, right? After listener, we'll be having the marketing actions. Marketing actions is like the to do list. Okay, so you've started it, you waited for something to happen. Now that something has happened, what do you want to do with it? So uh, in this case, we made use of the send email, and to send email is the place where we are using the email experience manager. So uh, what happens is like after that, the email will be sent, and based on that, this particular pipeline ends. But in actual in actual scenario, right? Remember, sometime before I told you like we can segment them, right? So what we can do is we can add something here over here, a custom listener. We can add like whether the user registered or whether the contact is of this age. We can add them to this list, and then you have it. So again, when you want to do it, right? You can you can start it for a particular list, and you can you can run the campaign and those kind of stuffs. Uh, the one of the most important thing over here is like uh, apart from the basic stuffs. If we are, if we were able to, if we are able to uh, segment our customers uh, based on the age group, or based on the product they use, or based on the product, or based on from what do you say, uh, the patterns which they give, right? And uh, that would help us again. You know, that will bring us a next step closer. You know, it's always like uh, uh, the next best thing which you can do is uh, make use of this campaign, and then you can uh, what do you say, make use of these pipelines, these cycle products, and then you can uh, you know provide them more. Uh, um, uh, what do you say? Personalized approach. A uh, personalized. Uh, uh, what do you say? Personalized. Uh, personalized content. Sorry. So uh, okay. Now let's go back to this uh, uh, user case. Use case, right? I'll just uh, uh, give a demo of that. So uh, before we uh, we start off with everything, right? Like right now, so far there are 86 persons, and there are out of 86, like you know, uh, 72 have visited, and then there in uh, 72 persons we've dropped a mail and those kind of stuffs. Uh, this is just a number, so that when it comes actual view, right, I uh, will know like whether they have visited and then they have made that change. Let me just apply. Let us load a contact. Let's come back over here and they have this Italy, 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 Italy. And now, what we can do is we can come up over here. We can visit Italy. We visited Italy, meaning that there is uh, this contact which is inside our uh, uh, see. It's, it has come up over here. Like uh, that is one user who came in. Uh, is it it? Now it's waiting for this event to happen. Yeah. When I say right, see, when it comes to an event, right, we'll always have. When it, when it comes to a listener, right, it always have this uh, a timeline or some uh, yeah, things attached to for. Like say for example, it will wait for next to two minutes for the for the goal to be triggered, uh, which is finished. Or we can have this hours, days, or instead of the time, like until which time they do those kind of stuff. So without wasting, they would come up over here. Uh, consider this as an actual visit. They can come in, and then they can visit. They can uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, visit this Venus, Venus as well. So what happens is we have come up over here like previously there must be 72 over here and then 86 must be here i think that one person has now uh, reached it towards the end okay how we will know about this is let me just come up over here just a second
okay let me just come up over here i have reached i've got a mail okay i've got a mail okay this uh, the the time zone which shows over here is uh, different as i'm accessing it from browser so what happens is like uh, we have this uh, uh, trip weekly right now you know at uh, uh, 25 percent discount for this particular user uh, so what happens is like uh, uh, when they come up over here right? so the image should also come right like this okay so if you do you go to give an absolute image then it will get the actual image let me just try get this out see so when i just a more of the same uh, i mean like it's more like uh in a way to convince you that i've got the same thing so we have this and then we've uh you know once we've identified once we've identified that that particular contact is a romantic lawyer who's interested in romance uh, you know romantic destinations and of all the uh, destinations they have uh, uh checked up on this uh uh what do you say uh just check yeah another thing because we We've done that twice. So uh, they are more interested in Italy. So what we can do is like we can have this, uh, uh, you know, a twenty-five percentage off, and then what will happen is we have this uh, uh, link coming in over here. Once they click this, then it will be redirected to uh, uh, to that page. Let me just show. I believe it should be. It will be. Uh, more or less like uh, okay before uh, let it uh, let us give it time to load okay and it's loaded so uh, over here and then coming in okay so what happens is uh, just, go, just go into the email experience manager part just just come on come on let me trip in it will trip in addition the message uh, if you see the message over here right it's more like an uh, html part where you can have this and then you have this email experience uh, uh, what do you say uh, the experience manager things uh, set up and what the says is you'll it, be having all these things over here and you can edit this content and uh, let me just show you You can have this link. You can have those whatever text. And when you have this link, right? You might, uh, you know, you can include any, uh, what do you say, any, any, any parameters for you to identify that this particular visit is coming from an, uh, uh, you know, uh, e e email experience manager. I mean, like uh, from this email campaign which you are running. Uh, let me just show you once. Just a second. Once you come up over here, right? Once that particular uh, uh, email experience manager and they have clicked in and they have come in over here, right? We can make use of those events and all. Th those events will be captured by Sitecore by default. Should come up over here in the dashboard. Just, just okay. Let it. Let me just take this. Okay, let, let, let it load. I think like there must be some, uh, you know, uh, technical issue with my uh, local instance. So what happens is like we'll be able to give them some additional, uh, you know, twenty five percentage off kind of thing. So once they click here, right, uh, the even those uh, click, right. So when the so what happens is like uh, uh, this this particular uh, 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 what do you say this particular uh, session, right? It is triggered by our. Uh, mail like uh, the email experience manager campaign which we've sent right based on that uh, uh, stuff only this particular uh, uh, session has been has begun and sidecore captures that information so what happens is like uh, uh, in down the line when you have this mail sent to the user and they haven't uh, read this or they haven't uh, responded to it like these are the settings like when they haven't read this or when they haven't responded to this you can make use of an automation campaign to uh, send them the an additional uh, mail as well There must be some success thing for me that has come in. That's okay. But it will come up again. No problem. Let me just give it a sec. It will be up. So uh, until then, right, let me just go. Okay, it, it is up.
see uh, when i said right like the uh, sent emails like you know the number of ones that has been sent let me just put it up for a long right okay see if you see right from the for a long time right so what are the mails they have sent and whether there is this open rate whether they have opened it and whether they have clicked the link which they've sent them you know like what are the mail that sent whether it is delivered or you know whether it is bounced or whether it is not those kind of stuffs we'll have and when it comes to our uh, uh, automation campaign right let me just continue We have this custom listener, right? Let me just show you the rules. Yeah, see, when it comes to email, right? When the contact clicked any email, whether the email which we've sent, like whether this email, right? What this email will come is like uh, whether that uh, email which we've, uh, which we've given, like whether it is this weekly mail, like whether he has clicked that mail, uh, those kind of stuffs. So what happens is like whether they have, you know, whether they have clicked this email, uh, those kind of stuff. If not, we can send them a one last reminder or we can send some, I know, maybe we can, you know, bargain with them again. Like maybe this time instead of 25 percentage off, we can give the 25 percentage off plus one free, uh, what do you say, uh, breakfast, those kind of stuff. Okay. And uh, when they have, and, uh, this, this can up, come up again in multiple ways. Like, you know, when a particular session is also triggered based on a campaign, right? Let me just Huh. When the uh, particular marketing automation, right? When there is particular this campaign which they have involved, are those kind of stuffs we can again include them those additional things. So what I'm trying to say over here is with this uh, uh, email experience manager, right? It's, it it doesn't end uh, after you trigger that mail. You can also track of it. You can also keep track of uh, whether the customer has opened that email, whether they have visited that, whether they have clicked on it, and based on that again you can modify your uh, you know the next interaction with them. Like if they haven't opened, if they are not done, then you can send one reminder or you can give some awesome offers. Those kind of stuff. So uh, that's what uh, the marketing automation is about. As I said, right? Uh, they have this listener uh, which is here over here. Okay, is a small uh, goal. And then that is this marketing action, uh, which is, you know, sending an email, uh, which they have done. And finally, the, for the, for sending email, right. I thought like, rather than uh, putting them into splitting them into group or those kind of stuff, if we just put them into an, uh, uh, in a email experience kind of thing, it will kind of give you one more, uh, what do you say, um, vision to your thoughts related to this, uh, uh email experience manager. So uh that's it and before we move on to the query session right uh, uh i would like to uh, you know talk about like uh, of course there is this question which might come up which might rise right see uh all these marketing automation tools they are used by uh, as the sales team or the marketing team or the content authors or content editors or product owners kind of thing like wh what does the developer's job is here like you know our, our job mainly revolves in setting them up but uh, a decade ago, like we had this different class of developers, you know, we had this front end developer, we had this back end developers, and then we have this, uh, what do you say, uh, UA, ABA, and all those things. But now, after a few, uh, you know, uh, for the past few, four, five years, something, right, or five years, six years, right, we had this full stack developer coming into picture. And uh, along with that, right, uh, uh, rather than this, uh, uh, the full stack developers coming in, and then there is this, uh, we, are, we, are, we are supposed to, you know, uh, know about DevOps, the pipelines, and you know, say, uh, setting up of uh, uh, servers and all those things. So uh, ultimately, what I personally feel is like in the next thing, like we might also have this. Uh, it's also it's also quite interesting thing, and it's also a good to have a, you know skill if you are uh, interested about this marketing. I mean, like uh, the marketing applications or this marketing or those kind of stuff, right? It will be more like an what do you say a digital developer profile kind of thing that might that may emerge. So uh, that's what again. This is the final part of the uh, session, you know, like uh, to, uh, to have that, uh, to, to complete the circle, this is it about. So in future, like we might have this uh, uh, digital developer kind of thing. So, uh, um, and before we go on to the queries, right? Uh, so final thing is like uh, about me, uh, thanks Rohan for this, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, the introduction, it was more, uh, what do you say? More uh, uh, better than even the one I intended for myself. So my name is Pushwangna Nangalajan. I'm a Psycho certified. I've been, uh, you know, 9.110 certified and I've been associated with Psycho working on it for the past uh, uh, five years or something, uh, which is my overall, almost my overall experience. And uh, the, I blog at uh, pushwangna.com.blog and this is my email ID. And I'm currently working as a developer in Infosys. So, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you have any queries, you know, not just related to this particular, uh, you know, session uh, related to Sitecore. I'll be happy to, uh, you know, uh, help you out in the way I can. So, to queries uh, and uh, 
one last uh, like one last thing is like i have to thank uh, rohan uh, vinod and the uh, admins of psycho user group pune for uh, providing me this space and opportunity uh, i know this particular session or whatever we we've, we've seen in the past one hour is not a it's not a traditional one it's not a conventional one how you see it's more of an experimental one and thanks for uh, so over to queries uh, i'll start sharing my screen and then we'll work on this queries yep i will uh, read it read it for you pushpa yeah. So, yeah so first question is uh, what are the different customizations required for complex business use case in expense optimization except the default analytics provided by sitecore um uh, different customizations required for complex business use case in experience optimization okay except the default analytics when it comes to like you want to mention like ab testing maybe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. ab yeah, sure. see there are two things okay like uh, there are in fact three things uh, there is this ab testing and multivariate testing uh, when it comes to ab testing right you have a page you have a component okay in that particular page and that particular component one component uh, you'll be uh, you know uh, changing and then you'll be utilizing them against each other and there is this another thing which is a multivariate thing like where you have more than one components or rather where you have a uh what do you say more than one components that are involved when you have it then that gives more uh probability kind of things so it depends upon the requirement like uh so uh the base thing is like if you're having this one component in a page and then if you're going to read we can make use of this ab and if there is more than one component fetching then that is a multivariate uh thing like you have to uh set up different versions like in first version this is the component and this is the thing in the second version you have to the se second version of the same page you just have to uh change the data data source kind of thing and then finally in the uh, third version uh, again uh, two different components kind of things yeah. okay so uh second question is like uh, if we use marketing automation tool for enterprise customer what are the challenges we are facing in terms of performance infrastructure and the maintainability <laughs> it's a big question and challenges in the sense like uh, see uh, the very first thing in setting up these uh, uh, the things are uh, what do you say we need this uh, x connect component more important thing and then there is this uh, relevant databases and all those all those stuff so when it comes to uh, infra infrastructures and uh, performance related things like so uh, uh, it's it's like if we have uh, it, it also depends upon the number of customers who visit our site like you know we have a site to have if, you know uh, maybe we have a concurrent user or per day user as you know maybe you know uh a 500 logged in customers per day or it, it goes up to uh, you know 2000 or if it goes more up beyond that right sitecore can manage it but uh, the only thing is it the the uh, what do you say the performance will fall upon the infrastructure and when it comes to infrastructure uh, we have to provide some uh, you know a dedicated uh, resources for uh, uh, what do you say uh, x connect or the relevant databases so uh for 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 a normal or for a simple uh, uh applications right by in a cd where they have a uh, uh, what do you say some 50 or something concurrent users or less than that right then it should it should be you know uh, the, uh, the, the 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 what do you say the traditional st setup we have right like uh, uh one uh, one one cm two cd those kind of stuff that should be fine and uh, the same applies for the x connect also and the the database instances also okay thanks pushpalan uh next one is like can we implement uh, this uh, marketing automation tools and other stuff with sitecore jss uh ideally yes but uh, uh i haven't i haven't explored that part uh, a lot mm -hmm. okay sorry, but yeah yeah ideally yes yeah okay next one uh, is the possibility to integrate all these features with uh, sitecore sx uh absolutely uh, uh sector sx is like uh, more of an uh, uh, what do you say it's an additional uh, on top module right like uh, we have sector mvc on top of that we have sector sx where it comes with some few out of the box components uh, the marketing applications and everything right it it uh, it, it is something that is uh, outside that the outside that bubble or outside that circle so it can be utilized uh, when, and especially when it comes to uh, yes uh, you know site core or sx site side i mean the traditional mvc or sx site side the difference is uh, almost null or uh, uh, null to void in case of uh, uh, what do you say uh, marketing utilizing the marketing applications uh, yes we can okay. integrate okay thanks pushpakan yeah just one more question pushpakan rohan here so uh, i just wanted to add on the second question right when we think about what are the challenges 
we have for performance intra. Now the demo we saw is something you just use Sidecore XP, right? Uh, that to like all the pieces built in XP. Now, when we see composable DXP in place where you can use box server for uh, email, you can use Sidecore send. This, yeah. I think the performance and infra will be handled by those tools, right? What are your yes. thoughts? Please? Exactly, exactly. Um, uh, so we have this uh, uh, box server, Sidecore customer data platform. Uh, if you see those uh, uh, UAs and those things, right? It, it, uh, the very first time when I explored that, it reminded me of Sidecore uh, experience profile and those things. And the other thing which moves in, right? Uh, that's what they uh, they uh, termed as Sidecore Send, which is again uh, acquired by Sidecore recently. That is for email experience managers and uh, uh, you know email campaigning kind of things. So uh, these two, right? They are, uh, the box server and all, it will be coming up as an, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, SaaS offering kind of things. Uh, so what happens is like these uh, setup right will come into uh, uh, the SaaS offering will come in. So everything that is applicable to cloud right that will be come up over, that that will be applicable over there. Uh, thanks, Logan, for reminding this. Actually, yeah. No problem. Yeah, great question, guys. So uh, Pushpaganan, like uh, there are uh, questions from three guys. Can you just uh, two from them uh, for this questions category? So that we can share the vouchers. Yeah. I 